auditory cortex. So you recall, we have our image in the lower left corner. Here's our semicircular canals. Here's our cochlea right next door. And we have this uh, vestibular cochlear nerve coming in here, seven and eight, uh, going through the internal acoustic meatus, all those good things. Focusing on the cochlea, I think of this as a backward piano keyboard because this has basically a tonotopically organized um, organization to it. And um, this information at a tonotopic level is gonna go through this auditory nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve into our auto, uh, cochlear nuclei. And from there, it's going to bounce around through half a dozen brainstem areas, work its way up through the inferior colliculus, go out that brachium of the inferior colliculus up to the medial geniculate body. Remember medial for music, MGN. And from the medial geniculate to auditory cortex, and if you take your boxing glove, you make your fist and open that thumb, you're looking inside the sylvian fissure or that lateral sulcus. And in that posterior aspect is a transverse temporal gyrus. And that's where your primary auditory cortex is hanging out. So here's a primary auditory cortex. And you can use functional MRI to map that out. So here are eight people from my lab where we mapped out uh, tonotopic high to medium to low pitches. And on average, here's where the primary auditory cortex is located. And you can map out areas sensitive to vocalization shown in the blue, and then sense uh, areas that are sensitive to speech, uh, native speech for English speakers in this case. And these areas more in the pink uh, become more sensitive when you hear speech related sounds. So the point of this slide is that as you go from the early tonotopically organized auditory areas to more complex stimuli such as vocalizations and speech sounds, you're going out more laterally uh, and spreading out along the cortical mantle as these more higher association areas put together. What does that sound information put together words for you and other acoustic objects? Now, if you have, um, oh, and here's a, uh, to go with uh, Dr. Putani's talk here, we have a DTI image looking at some of that tractography going from the medial geniculate nucleus out to uh, transverse temporal gyrus with the fusion tensor imaging shown here. If you have a lesion to one of your primary auditory cortex, you may have some difficulty lo uh, localizing sound, subtle hearing loss, but usually not terribly, terribly bad. You really need to take out both the left and right hemisphere. Uh, and if you do that, then you lose conscious level perception of what you're hearing. Now, if it's just the cortex that you're taking out, you still have acoustic reflexes intact. So if you hear something and jump and respond to that, that's going through that inferior colliculus and brainstem structures, and those are can be still relatively intact. But you're not consciously aware of what you're hearing. Then auditory association cortices, we get to the superior temporal gyrus and superior temporal sulcus region. And when you have damage there, that can lead to what's called central hearing loss. So you might be able to hear that there's a sound, but you may have difficulty putting in putting it together, what are you hearing? And that ties in with uh, what Dr. Tani was talking about with uh, Wernicke's area, if it's a left hemisphere damage, uh, and this would be a Wernicke's area where right is on the, let's see, right is on the left side of the screen, it's radiologic format. Uh, and if that's affecting your Wernicke's area or your language reception areas, then you have difficulty putting words together. You can hear someone's talking, but you can't tell what they're saying. It's kind of like Charlie Brown, uh, the adults, when they hear the wall, 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 wall. I can tell you're talking, but I don't know what you're saying. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.